But lately, you know, they've excavated some that were destroyed by earthquakes. And it turns out almost all the rooms were used to store the pottery used to serve feasts. Wow. And that really what these things were, were places where large groups of people came together and ate together. Yep. And socialized. Exactly. That's the cute thing. You know, yeah, yeah. When, you, when you want to punctuate time, when you want to create a sense of growth in the life. Yes. You know, your birth and your death and lots of moments, your w marriage, your, even your divorce. Kids. Um, children, kids. Yeah. These things are all marked by foods that we eat. And the same thing like on the, on the rhythm of the year. Yeah. We have Valentine's Day and we have Halloween and we have t Thanksgiving coming up. Thanksgiving. And, and yeah. all of these events are, you know, on some, uh, on some level, yeah, they're marketing to us and they're selling us all kinds of often hideously unhealthy foods. But what we're doing with it is building community yeah. and building social ties. And it's a very human thing to do and really important. I remember digging up a bowl that had been smashed in a garbage pit and it was full of empty snail shells. Mm -hmm. Well, the snails went to one person to be analyzed mm -hmm. and the pot went to the ceramics person. And they're interested in, you know, how the pottery was traded and only in the last 20 years have they been interested in what it was used for. Yeah. So it was always the focus was on the pot. It's like, you know, understanding American culture by looking at containers mm -hmm. without ever paying attention to the stuff that's it's in the in container. containers. Soup, yes. you know, tamales, tortillas. So many different variations. Yeah. And we're, we're like seeing this absolute revolution in archaeology as people start to recognize that it's important, you know, the way that people use the food. So, you know, we wow. can tell wow. what people ate, we can tell how much uh, seafood they were getting in their diet from looking at um, uh, different isotope signatures in the bone. Wow. Um, we can now get residue from the edges of stone tools so we can tell what they were cutting with it. Yeah, that's crazy. Right? Because like the fat from an animal actually bonds with the silica in the, in the tool. Wow. And um, we now can get residue out of pots and we can say, oh, they were drinking cacao out of these yes. pots. So now when we see a particular shape of pot, we can say, yeah, that's a cacao drinking vessel. Yeah. And they're that shape because it was foamy and they didn't want it to overflow. They liked yeah, the yeah. foam on top. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, suddenly we're tur they're turning the tools around and using these incredible new techniques to get so much more information than we ever had before and to think about how people created social life. Yes. You know? And I think as archaeology progresses, we're going to find out that there's a close relationship between politics and hunger. Yeah. I think what archaeology is going to be able to show us is what kinds of things produce such a radical kind of inequality that some people are willing to stand around eating while other people in front of them are dying of starvation. Yeah. 